Hi, this is Shannon. This is Cycle 1, Week 2. I'm going to talk about some tutor ideas and memory work ideas you can do at home. If you're new here, I am a homeschooling mom of three little ones, five, three, and one years old, and we are part of Classical Conversations and love it. And I've had the privilege of tutoring for the past couple years, and so I'm just excited to share some ideas with you. I hope this is helpful. Um, and be sure to stick around to the end of this video. I am going to show you some more free resources I'm going to put on my blog for you for the second week. If you missed the last video I made, um, I made some fun games and activities for you and your kids to do for the first week's material, and I'll link that below too in case you missed it. But so we're going to start with English today. I like to start with English pretty much every week. I like the kids to know what to expect. I've made a little book. I showed this last week, but in case you missed it, I made a little book for each child in my group. So I put these out on the table before we start. That shows them where to sit down. And I've um, decorated them with this biology cover since that's what we're talking about in Cycle 1 Science. And I put their names on each one. I usually laminate this piece of paper and stick it on the um, book I got that's preschool lined paper. I'll link below where I got these. But I like this because it gives them some writing practice each week and it worked really well last year. So I'm gonna do it again. So for this week, we're going over the first five prepositions. So that's week one, I'm gonna flip to week two. And what I did, as you can see, is I have prepositions at the top and then I wrote three of the prepositions down and I left blank lines for two of them. So I'm gonna have my kids write two of them in. Um, somebody asked me last week about what if you have really young kids and they can't really write yet? What I did last year, because my kids were younger or the class I had was even younger than I'll have this year. Um, I had more four-year-olds. I would really lightly write the words or like write with little dots so they could trace them. I just feel like they're capable of a little bit more this year. So I'm going to actually at least start this way where I'm having bl or writing blanks and having them actually write. And some of them are a little, you know, able to do this more than others. That's where the parents help. And as I get to know the kids in my class, I might you know, have some words that they can trace for some of like the younger kids and then maybe leave more blanks for the older kids. You can do different things in the different notebooks depending on the kids level. So uh, I just like to have them do some writing practice each week. I think it's really good for them. They enjoy it. So as they're working on this and the prepositions we are doing are about above. So they'll write above across after. So they'll write after against. So we'll go through those together. I'll have them write um, above and, what did I say, after. <laughs> and then we'll go over the hand motions together. So the hand motions um, to what's called this preposition song. I did not create this song, but if you look on YouTube, there's this really awesome video of this family doing it. So um, I yeah, I would watch that, but I'll do the hand motions with you for the first week. So it goes like this. About, above, across, after, against. And the little tune starts like this. Um, a preposition, do, 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 relates a noun, to, 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 or pronoun to, 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 another word, to, to, to. About, above, across, after, against. And then it keeps going with along, amid. Um, but I'll save that for next week. So again, I didn't create that song, but you can look it up on YouTube. It's just called the preposition song and see them doing the whole song. Um, in my videos, I'm just gonna do the ones we do each week. And then next week, um, I'll start with week two and then add on week three, because with my class, we'll just you know continue adding on the prepositions, but we'll practice the song and the motions from the beginning each time. So hopefully by week 12, they'll be really solid at it. So we'll do that, we'll practice that song together and the hand motions, I'll let them finish writing their words and then I give them a sticker each week to put on the front of their book. I forget if I already said this, but Mike Turner is not actually in my class, I just made up the name, just so you know I'm not like showing somebody's name in my class, <laughs> I just made it up so I could show you guys, but you can, um, 
I, I get stickers each week that I have them put on their book. It's fun. And then by the last week, they've got 24 or more stickers on their book. And I try to find stickers related to something that we're learning about. Some weeks I can, some weeks I don't. But it's fun if you can. So that is English this week. For timeline this week, I have these timeline cards again, like I had last week. I got these from the Classical Conversations bookstore. I also got these letters that I put on them from the Dollar Tree. I like to put the first letter of each event on each card so that my younger class, because um, I have four, five, and sometimes six-year-olds, can identify them if they can't read yet. So I'll link below where I found those, but I like to do that. I did this last year, and it just helped them identify the card faster. And it helped them kind of think about like, oh, um, Hittites and Canaanites, what does Hittites start with? Oh, H, so it was good for them. What we're gonna do this week, a little bit different than last week, um, I'm also gonna, I'm still gonna hide the cards around the room before class starts. So they, uh, once we get to this point, I'll be like, okay, go find one or two cards that are hidden around the room. And this time, instead of bringing them back to the table, I'm gonna have them bring the cards to the floor and we're gonna sit in a circle on the floor and we're gonna put our cards in the center of the circle on the floor, face up, and we're going to kind of spread them out. And then I'm gonna say, okay, the first event this week is um, the seven wonders of the ancient world. Okay, seven wonders of the ancient world. What does seven start with? Oh, it starts with S. So we're gonna find that card and then we're all going to do the motion to that card. So for this one, it goes like this. Seven wonders of the ancient world. So I'm going to have them try that. And then we'll do the next one. So I'll say, okay, the next event is Patriarchs of Israel. What does that start with? P, 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 P. So here we go, Patriarchs of Israel. And then um, what is the hand motion for that? It's like this. I'll have everybody try this. Patriarchs of Israel. And then we'll keep doing that for each event. And we'll just keep putting them back in the center of the circle after we um, do the hand motion. Then after we've done all the hand motions for them, I'm going to have them kind of help me spread them out so we can see all the cards in the center of our circle face up still. And then I'm going to have them close their eyes and say, okay, I'm going to pick one of the cards and turn it face down. But nobody can see what I'm doing, so close your eyes. And then I'm going to turn one face down, and then I'll say, okay, what card do you think I turned over? And see if anybody can guess which card is turned over. And one thing, I didn't say this, but you could have them really study the cards before you turn one over, just so, you know, to help them. And then um, once they guess which card is turned over, I'll kind of take that one away or put it to the side, and then we'll do it again. So I'll say, okay, let's spread them out so we can see them really well, and then close your eyes, and I'm going to turn one over, and we're going to guess which one it is. And when they guess which one, you can practice the hand motion again so they're getting that practice for that. So um, then we'll do that until all the cards are gone. Obviously, when it's like two cards left or one card left, you know, they'll pretty much know what it is. Um, but I thought that was a fun twist for a timeline. And then what you can do after is if you want or have time, you can kind of have them stand up and we can go over the whole song and all the hand motions together. So I'll do that with you. Um, you know, you might decide that that took enough time and you want to move on to the next thing, but here are the hand motions. So again, it goes, seven wonders of the ancient world, patriarchs of Israel, 2000 BC, 2000 BC. And then we go, Hittites, Canaanites, Cush, make a K, Assyrians, so bow and arrow, Babylonian, so you make an L, like for law, and go like this. Babylonians, China Shang Dynasty, so it's like the buttons on the coat. China Shang Dynasty, and then I think that's it. So that is timeline this week. For geography this week, we are talking about the Assyrian Empire, and I have these Trivian table maps that I will use. So my amazing director got one for each kid in my class. So I will prepare them ahead of time by outlining each 
feature and then um, I'm going to let the kids kind of color them in. So if you don't have these for each kid, you could laminate the map from the um, Sandbox eZine and CC Connected for week two. So they'll have maps in each week. Um, they have a magazine, the Sandbox eZine or eZine, however you pronounce that, for each week and you can laminate the map and then have them color on it. Or you could get like those laminated page protector things and use those. But So I prepare these for my kids beforehand and then hand these out so the features are already outlined in different colors. And then I'm going to give them a little piece of candy or like an M&M or something that they can put on each um, place as we talk about them. So we're going to start with the Mediterranean Sea, which is in blue here. And last week I told them we are going to talk a lot about the Mediterranean Sea because we um, are going to talk about a lot of places around that huge sea, the cycle. So we're going to start with the Mediterranean Sea, and then we've got the Black Sea up here in green, the Caspian Sea in purple, and we've got the Persian Gulf, Babylon in pink here, and the um, Red Sea. So I'm going to teach them a song to the tune of the wheels on the bus, and it goes like this. Assyrian Empire, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Babylon, Persian Gulf, Red Sea, Assyrian Empire, Assyrian Empire, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Babylon, Persian Gulf, Red Sea, Assyrian Empire. And then you could, you know, have them review some. I like to especially review geography as we're doing it. So you could say, Babylon, what two rivers does Babylon look like it's between? Do you guys remember the names of those rivers? And you can review that and talk about what's that little triangle? What's that little um, place right close to Babylon? Oh, remember that was called Sumer. Okay. And what's the area between the Tigris and Euphrates River? Mesopotamia. So you can review that. It's so simple to review each week because we're doing areas around this like places in the same area for a while. So um, also you can, you know, maybe play a little game where if they have their M&Ms on each place, you can say, okay, who can tell me what the purple C is called? And then you can, everybody can eat their M&Ms, you know, and then who can tell me what the blue C is called? And then everybody can eat their M&Ms off that C or something like that. I'll, and then I'm going to let them, give them some dry erase markers and let them color in each of the C's after we're done kind of with that part and then we'll sing the song a few more times. So that is geography this week. For math this week, we are skip counting the threes and the fours. So I'm gonna give my kids an action card or movement card. I um, made these and put these on my blog. You can download them for free. I'll link below where to find them. But um, they're really fun. The kids love doing these actions. So we've got like march, walking backwards, leaping, freeze, roll around. There's 24 different cards. So you can, um, you know, give each kid a card and then sing the threes normally first and then choose the first kid's action and everybody sing the threes to that action and then, you know, rotate. So the threes go like this. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, and 45. And then if you have a lot of kids in your class, you could um, do like half of the kids' kids cards for the threes and then half of them for the fours. Or if you just have a few kids, you could have them choose a different action card to do the fours too. So the fours go like this. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52, 56, and 60. So that is math. For history this week, we are doing the last five of the Ten Commandments. And I said last week I did some hand motions for these. I got these from Crystal K on YouTube. So thank you, Crystal. I'm going to continue doing hand motions for this week too. And it would be good to review the first week's hand motions. So you can watch my video for those if you haven't already. Um, and then, you know, do all 10 with your kids this week. So for um, 
the first one, thou shalt not murder. So this is the sixth commandment. So we're going to hold up six fingers and then poke our palm like this for thou shalt not murder. The seventh or the next one is thou shalt not commit adultery. So we're going to hold up seven fingers and cross these two to signify um, being faithful to your spouse. So thou shalt not commit adultery. The next one is thou shalt not steal. So hold up eight fingers for the eighth one and then grab those three like you're taking them. So thou shalt not steal. And then for the ninth one, so we're going to hold up nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So we're going to hold up a nine and then cut it and off like that. And then for the last one, thou shalt not covet. So we're going to hold up all 10 and then make little binoculars like we're looking at other people's things and wanting them. So we're going to do those hand motions together and then I will play the Classical Conversations history song. You can play their music in your class. You're not supposed to play, you know, other music, but you can play the Classical Conversation songs. And um, so I'm going to do that and we'll practice the hand motions for all 10 of the commandments as we listen to that song. So that is history this week. For Latin this week, this is the same as last week, and we'll also do this same Latin for weeks 13 and 14. So we're talking about the noun cases. And I shared last week that we learned a little tune to, or learned a song to the tune of Are You Sleeping Brother John? And it goes like this. Nominative, subject, genitive, possessive, Dative, indirect, object, accusative, direct, object, ablative, object of the preposition. These are the noun cases. And so we'll sing that normally once. They did that last week too, so it should be familiar. And then I'm going to give them a silly voice card. So I also made these, have these up on my blog. I'll link below. You can download them for free. Um, but we've got like hold your breath and lights out so we could turn all the lights off whisper through your teeth so fun ones they love these so i like to save these if i'm going to do them to the end um so like when they're kind of you know tired a little antsy it just they really like it and it gets them engaged so we're going to sing this song again to their different silly voices um i'll sing the song one more time for you and um, yeah, so we'll do it normally the first time and then rotate their silly voices. So again, it goes like this. Nominative, subject, genitive, possessive, dative, indirect, object, accusative, direct, object, ablative, object of the preposition. These are the noun cases. And again, that's the t to the tune of Are You Sleeping, Brother John? So that is Latin. For science this week, we are talking about what are the kingdoms of living things. So I'm going to bring my little finger puppets in for this. Um, I just got these on Amazon. I can link where I got them. And I am going to give one to each kid. So we've got different animals because we're talking about kingdoms of living things. And one of those is animalia. So we've got animals here. They're going to have um, each get one. And we're going to sing our little song to the tune of Do Your Ears Hang Low. And they get to sing it with their little puppet. So we're going to sing it like this. What are the kingdoms of living things? Animalia, planti, fungi, protista, archaea, bacteria. These are the kingdoms of living things. You can have them try to like sing it to their puppet then you can maybe have their puppet sing it quietly and loudly and um, really excited. So you could change it up, mix it up like that. So you practice it several times with the kids. So again, it goes like this. What are the kingdoms of living things? Animalia, planti, fungi, protista, archaea, bacteria. These are the kingdoms of living things. So I definitely like doing little tunes with my kids. They're little. I have four, five, and six-year-olds in my um, obesitarian class, and 
the, they just memorize so well to a little tune. It's fun. It's a good way to review in future weeks. I can just put those songs on or we can talk about like, what do you remember how the song went for this? I don't necessarily do a song for every single thing, but I try to because it's just a really catchy, easy way to remember, especially for the younger kids. Maybe the older kids don't like that as much, but the younger kids do. So I definitely like making little tunes for things. That is science. And then for review this week, I'm going to bring Play-Doh. I like to make my own um, and sometimes make it different colors. So I'm going to bring in some Play-Doh and give it to the kids and tell them to try to make an animal or um, we talked about plant eyes so they could make a tree or a bush or a flower or they could try to make fungi or something like that related to science. And then I'm going to make a playlist of the week one songs and just play that as they're working on their Play-Doh. I like to keep review pretty chill for these little kids. They're usually really tired by the end and just kind of wound up. So um, I usually try to kind of calm them down with our review time. I also promised I would show you some of the activities and games I've made that you can do at home with your kids related to the memory work for the second week. So I will link below where to find these, but you can get these for free on my blog. And if you already got the week one ones, then I will send an email to you with these so you don't even have to do anything. But if you didn't get the first week activities, Make sure you um, go to my blog and get them so I can give you new ones each week. I think they're really fun, and my kids and I love games, so I like to make little games related to the memory work. So we got Skip counting the threes. They have to um, fill in the missing numbers, get the baby grasshopper to the mama and data, and then we got Skip counting the fours where they fill in the missing numbers for the little polar bears. And I've got the Assyrian Empire where they can roll a dice and find, um, and depending on the number that they roll, then they can identify the place that the number is on, so the different C. And then for noun cases, even though we're doing the same thing as last week, I made a new maze activity where they can match the Latin to the English for each one. And then for science, this is the one I'm most excited about. I made a, oops, sorry, um, a seek and find. So I have different animals, plants, fungus, archaea, bacteria, protista, and they can find how many of each one there are and write the number of each one that they see in their little boxes. So I also have these preposition cards that we're going to use for the next few weeks until week 12. Um, but I made a card for each preposition. So under, upon, etc. cetera. And um, what I'm gonna do and what you can do is print these out. You can print like two of each page of them and then play the game memory with them. Or you can just have them as cards to review through the week. You can do lots of different things. And I have those Ten Commandment cards I showed you last week that I will also use that's also on um, a part of that activity packet for week two. So I hope you use that. I'm excited to share that. And again, it's free. You just have to go to my blog and grab it. I'll link below how to get that. So I hope you have a great week. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm going to post a tutor video for each week this cycle, and then I also post other videos too related to homeschooling and parenting stuff and some health-related things, so please subscribe. I'm also posting the songs um, for each, or the songs that I make for each subject for each week as well, so anyway, please subscribe so you don't miss out, and also check out my blog. I have those free activities and just others. Um, fun stuff on there. So check that out when you have a chance and have a great day. Thank you for watching.